Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joseph Hughes. Thank you for watching. The purpose of this video is George McClellan saved the Union. Oh my God, I can't believe it. George McClellan actually saved the Union. Okay, now I know that a, a lot of people who study the Civil War and a lot of historians have never said those words. They've never put those words together. George McClellan saved the Union. Okay, now I'm standing in front of uh, the North Carolina Monument uh, on Fox's Gap which was uh, which was a battlefield during the South Mountain Battle, just preceding the Battle of Antietam. And let me show you the, the monument here real quick. Uh, okay, now many of you who have watched my uh, my videos know that my great great grandfather fought for a North Carolina regiment. In fact, he fought for the Second North Carolina Regiment, and the Second North Carolina Regiment was here on that day, eight April. Uh, or September 14th, 1862, and, and he must have participated in this battle, okay? Now, of course, this this video is not about my great-grandfather. It's not about the North Carolina Regiment. It's about George McClellan saving the Union, okay? Now, now let me set the stage for you, okay? Now, of course, you know, as history has come down to us, it was not allowed for those words to be uttered in the same sentence, George McClellan saves the Union, because George McClellan was a political opponent of the administration within which he worked. In other words, he was he was a Democrat, and he worked for and he served under a Republican administration. Okay, and because he was a political opponent, there's no way they could allow him to come away as a hero. You know, he had to come away as a villain. So, although I don't necessarily blame Abraham Lincoln, I do blame the Republicans around Abraham Lincoln for having tarnished George McClellan's uh, reputation and for that to have been set in cement and to be told all the way down even to this day. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about why, how George McClellan saved the Union. Okay, now you have to have a little bit of broader context. Okay, in mid-August 1862, there was a battle called the Battle of Bull Run. Okay, now George McClellan had been removed of command of most of his army and General Pope was in charge of the army at that time. And unfortunately, the Battle of Bull Run turned into a complete fiasco. The Union Army was almost basically destroyed by Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, and sent streaming in complete chaos back into Washington, D.C. Okay? Now, many people say, and actually this was, I was thinking about using this as a, as a, uh, as a uh, title for this video, uh, the high water mark of the Confederacy. Uh, most people attribute the high water mark of the Confederacy to the Battle of Gettysburg. No, no, that's not true. The high water mark of the Confederacy was September 1862. Okay, basically, as I stated, uh, the, bat the second Battle of Bull Run, Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, James Longstreet shatter the Union Army and send it streaming back to Washington, D.C. in complete chaos and complete disorganization, a completely demoralized force, you know, piecemeal going back to Washington, D.C. Okay, now, Pope, you know, he reported this, this, this army's demoralization has, is, is epic. Oh, my God, it has fallen apart. The army has fallen apart. So the Union is facing a crisis, a crisis upon which the United States has never faced before or since August 1862. So Abraham Lincoln, Edward M. Stanton, and, and General Halleck, the high command of the Union have, have, have a crisis on their hand. The Union Army has fallen apart. The Union Army in the East has fallen apart. And suddenly they find out Robert E. Lee is invading the North. So, oh my God, the Union is being invaded by a Confederate Army that, which has just shattered our Army. Our Army is still shattered. What do we do? What do we do? So Abraham Lincoln sets upon, uh, okay, we need, to put, we need to put somebody in charge of this Army who can put it back together and save the Union. Oh my God. So he, he goes to Ambrose Burnside. Ambrose Burnside turns it down. He's tr he, he tries to send General Halleck out into the field, and General Halleck says, nope, ain't happening. I ain't doing it. So finally, Abraham Lincoln, against the wishes of his cabinet, puts General George B. McClellan back in charge of the Army of the Potomac. And it's not even the Army of the Potomac. It's a shattered remnant of a couple different armies. So, so basically, they go to George McClellan. They say, oh, my God, 
you know, you have to put this army back together again. The are you know, we're about at our end. The Union is about to end. If 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 the if the South invades, we're in deep deep trouble. Suddenly, the South invades. General McClellan takes over the army, and in three days, he begins the reorganization of the army in Washington D.C. Two days later, he's told you have to take this army on the road. Robert E. Lee is invading the North. If he gets up here and he has a battle on northern soil, if he defeats us, if he takes Washington, D.C., the war is over. The Confederates win. Now, as I said, this was a crisis that had never been, ever, ever been at this point before and would never be repeated. Okay? So George McClellan takes over the army. He rebuilds the army in three days. He puts the army on the road in five days. And his orders are shadow Robert E. Lee. Protect Washington DC. Make sure your army is between Robert E. Lee and Washington DC and also protect Baltimore, Maryland and Pennsylvania. So slowly George McClellan takes his shattered army reorganized in three days out into the field. So he slowly marches. Now a lot of people seem to think that George McClellan's orders were, hey there's going to be a battle at Antietam. Go over there, shatter the, the Confederate army, send it reeling and destroy Robert E. Lee. Those were not his orders. His orders were protect Washington, D.C., protect Baltimore, protect the North, and if you can, repel the invasion. Okay? So he sets out, he sends his troops there, he, he's moving very, at, a, at a very deliberate pace, about six miles a day, keeping his army between what he thinks is Robert E. Lee's army. He's trying to figure out exactly how big it is, how fast it's moving, what it's doing, and then you know, he's got General Halleck saying, you're moving too fast, you're moving too fast, stay between Washington, D.C. And, and his army. He's, he's going to come between you and he's going to come attack. So he's moving at a deliberate pace. A lot of people have criticized how fast he was moving. He is moving at a deliberate pace because he was told to move at a, a deliberate place. Not to mention, he's still reorganizing the army, a shattered army. Okay, so on September 4, on September 13th, they discover orders, special orders 191, and those orders show that four days ago, four days ago, Robert E. Lee split his army up. So the orders are four days old. Okay, and the orders don't really give specific numbers as to how large each command is, and and other events have kind of proven uh, contradictory to what the orders say, but the one thing it does tell George McClellan is that Robert E. Lee's army was split up into four pieces four days ago, so he needs to act. So within hours, he sends his troops to South Mountain, which is where I'm at right now, and he tells them, attack those Confederate troops on there, and he does that, and that's the battlefield we're on right now, okay? And he defeats those rebel units. He, he defeats my great-grandfather's North Carolina 2nd Infantry. He sends them into retreat. Okay, And meanwhile, the rest of his troops are moving towards basically Antietam. Okay? Now, now, of course, the one thing that George McClellan getting these orders does is it completely alters Robert E. Lee's plan. Okay? Uh, McClellan also sends troops up to the Hagerstown Road and blocks Robert E. Lee from going north. So he has basically ended Robert E. Lee's northern invasion, okay? He, he has ended the invasion, and Robert E. Lee begins to pull back. Okay? Now, once Robert E. Lee determines that Stonewall Jackson has taken Harper's Ferry, he stops. He says, okay, okay, we can, we can continue something here, and he sets himself up on the Antietam Creek with his back to the Potomac River, okay? And this is where the Battle of Antietam takes place. On September 17th, George McClellan attacks uh, Robert E. Lee's army inflicting heavy casualties on both armies, basically shattering both armies. Okay? And two days later, Robert E. Lee pulls his troops all the way back into Virginia and the invasion is over. George McClellan saved the Union. The invasion of the North is over. Robert E. Lee limps back into to Virginia and George McClellan he, he tries to put back his shattered army. Okay, now no, at no point in time was anybody telling George McClellan, your goal is to destroy Robert E. Lee's army. Nobody ever, not to mention the fact that his army was not in a condition to destroy any army. His, his you know, 25% of his men had never fired a shot in anger, and George McClellan did what he was told to do. 
He did the best he could. Now, after the Battle of Antietam, which was the bloodiest day in American history, he set about rebuilding his army and, set, and, and getting ready for the future campaign. And that's how George McClellan saved the Union. So, anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any comments, put the comments in, you know, in the comments. I want to hear what you think. And tell me what you think about George McClellan saving the Union. You heard it here, 160 years later, George McClellan saved the Union. Now, of course, he wasn't a perfect general, but you can't take that away from him. He saved the Union September 1862. Thank you for watching. This is Joseph Hughes, signing out.